What's up guys, it's Anders. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what you need to know about EQ2 in FL Studio. Let's get into it. And a big thanks to the channel sponsor, DistroKid. DistroKid is a music distribution service and the best way to get your music out to all of the modern streaming services fast, efficiently, and within an independent artist's budget. Check out the description below for a discount today. All right, first things first, how do we get EQ2 onto any of our channels? Well, I've got the breaks channel selected here. A nice easy shortcut is to press F8. And you'd think if we type EQ, it would show up. However, it doesn't, super frustrating. If we go to the bottom here where it says EQ, it does indeed show up here. And we can drag and drop that. And I'm gonna drop it on the breaks channel just here. So when it loads up, in my case, on a 5K screen, it is really, really small. In the bottom right-hand corner, we can resize this bad boy. Look at that, isn't it beautiful? Okay, so across the top here, it's got a breakdown of octaves. So relative to your keyboard, C1, it's gonna be containing these frequencies below here. It's then also got a nice split of sub, bass, low end, mid, high end. So at a quick glance, you know roughly where you are. Across the bottom, it also has a breakdown of the approximate frequency ranges. We can see those more precisely using the frequency of each channel and the display up the top. In FL Studio, anything that's really important tends to be displayed up in this top left-hand corner just here. For example, I can do a frequency sweep and we can see it all showing just there. We've currently got a gain control. This will lower or increase all of the gain by as much as 18 dB. If we hold option and click or control and click, it will center that back to zero for us. We've then got our seven bands and all are just outlined here. And they've got a nice little disc icon all being numbered and colored retrospectively to what's going on on the right hand side. Now, something that doesn't resize much is the filter types up here. Currently, we're set to a low shelf, a high shelf, and then five separate bell curves. Much like with the game, we can hold option and reset all of those. We can actually change uh, any filter to be anything. And there are multiple filter types to build in here. Now, if you right click, we don't get anything. However, if we click and drag on any of these, we can cycle through the different filter type. So we've now made one a bell, for example. Drag it down, we've got our shelf, notch, high pass, band pass, low pass, and switched off. Super useful to know that that's in there and you can switch between them. We've then got different slopes as well. So for example, if we were to make this a high pass, this little singular black dot is actually the kind of high pass roll off type. We can drag it down and it becomes much harder like a brick wall, or we can push it up and it's a nice soft roll off like you'd get on say an analog EQ. This also fixes the amplitude. We can't move it up or down. However, we can still create a bump at that frequency change by using the bandwidth adjuster at the bottom here, which is the Q. So we can still give a nice little bump up there. Now it's probably a good time to talk about the display that we can see as well. So what's going on here is the brighter something is, the more of that frequency there is. As you can see in this instance, there's pretty much no low end in this part of the break. If we move further on, however, we've now got lots of low end and we can see those individual frequencies. And this gives us a visual representation of the approximate balance that's going on. If we are hearing a sound that seems a little bit too hard, well, we can have a quick glance at here and see the brightest area. For example, we can see the top end of the snare shows up right around here. This way we can easily take control of that. In the menu arrow down the bottom here, you can switch this on to high precision. Depending on your monitor and GPU, this can be pretty intensive. I tend to leave it off. Just next to it, we've got HQ mode. HQ just simply switches on oversampling. Just next to that, we've got this little icon and I will most of my time when I use this, have this switched off. So we've just got some very simple dots. So now when we want to grab a frequency point, we can go over it and as you see, everything now highlights in the corresponding color as well. So I find that a much easier visual representation to look at. In our monitor controls, we can switch it off. This can be particularly useful if you've got a busy project and you find that the visuals here tend to push the GPU or even the CPU a little bit too hard, we can just switch it off entirely. Generally, unless I'm trying to fix a problem, this will be the mode I have it in. We've got input 
and output which will be adjusted for our EQ curve. For example, if I were to take all the low end away, it now no longer shows. If we switch input mode on, we can see that that information is in fact still there. Compare allows us to store an EQ setting by clicking the arrow just here. And if we make an adjustment, we can then use the other arrow to switch between the two. This allows us to A and B an EQ adjustment. And effectively make a decision between the two. Have we improved it or not? If we decide yes, we can store this in spare state, make our next adjustment, and then A, B the two. With a bell curve like we have here, it's important to note that the mouse wheel also adjusts the cue. So we can have a very sharp, nice cutoff just by dragging in just here. Alternatively, we can adjust it by using the wheel controls at the bottom here. This applies to all of the filters. If we were to switch this, for example, to a band pass, we can use that mouse wheel to adjust how our band pass sounds. That's a very simple and easy way of making nice drum filters and passes. Notice how the band pass is affected by other EQ elements. So for example, we could boost this up here. It's still going to affect the band pass and it will raise up at that moment. So you can make very interesting shapes and movements very, very simply. Do another one here. And that guys pretty much covers it. There is your crash course on EQ2. If the video was helpful for you, please bash a like on the video. It does help this get in front of more people, which then they can learn these cool things as well. And if it was helpful for you and you want to see more of these types of videos, subscribe to the channel because then I know that you like that video and I can create more like it and help you make a little bit more music. Have a nice day guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.